Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to day four of uh, the Engage conference. I'm Jamie Gallagher and welcome to the Engage live stream. This little corner of the internet where we catch you up with the day's goings on. We invite uh, reporters on who have been to sessions that you might not have been able to get along to so that they can give you some of the thoughts and the ideas uh, that happened over the course of the day. So welcome to all of you that are joining me again today. I'm delighted that again people come back time and time again uh, to join any of these live streams. We are hoping that people are joining us one to catch up on some of the sessions they might have missed or two because they've not been able to get to engage this year and we want to give you a little window into what has been happening so this is day four and again a really really busy day we were thinking about ethics a lot today and, and what that means in terms of engagement and that's where we started off with the the plenary uh, so I just say a quick hello to everyone that is watching. If you're watching, uh, say hello in the chat box. Uh, tell us uh, who you are, where you are. It's always nice to uh, connect with you um, because this is all the point. We're live and you get to chat to us uh, and put your questions and add your comments. Uh, what have you been to at Engage? Uh, have you been to the plenary session? Have you been to some others? Did you go to the living library? Tell us in the chat box uh, how your day has been looking. Or maybe it's not been very engage at all. Are you joining us today for the first time? Just chat to me. Make me feel like we're all engaging, that we're in a real space. Uh, that would be nice. So hello and welcome and get chatting. Uh, if you're watching on Periscope and you're thinking, how do I chat? How do I chat? I'm unsure of how to do it. It's slightly more complicated. You do need to be logged into a Periscope account, which not everyone has if you're not live streaming. So if you're watching just now on Twitter, but you want to join the conversation, uh, then it might be easier to jump over swap ship onto YouTube where you'll find us on the NCCP channel. If you are watching us on the NCCP channel, then do please click subscribe, click like. We would really like to know that the content is working for you and we want to make sure that when we go live, you're there and listening. And this is even this, the only time we're going to be going live today. We are going to be going live again later on for the open mic night. So at 4.15, uh, we're going to be going live. We're going to be having different public engagement professionals give their own interpretation of engagement of their year of the world. I've seen some of the entries and they're quite extraordinary. You do not want to miss out on this. So that's the open mic night, night is happening tonight on YouTube. Totally free. Join us at 4.15. Now, what I thought I'd start off with is, before I introduce uh, my guests, we've got Anna McKenna and we've also got uh, Akram Khan, both of whom you met earlier on the week and they're back to talk us through the workshops that they've been to. I thought I would just start off just with some thoughts on the plenary uh, session. Yay, Faye is joining us on Periscope. Hi, Faye. Um, I'm glad it's working. I'm also delighted when I see a comment coming in from Periscope. That pleases me because then I know that something's working. Uh, I think you should create a digital platform. Bingo. Uh, goodness knows I'm on all, most of them. We're not on Twitch. We're not streaming on Twitch right now. Um, hopefully we are on YouTube and Periscope. My little thing says I am. Well, one says an error. After oh, hi, Sarah. Oh, from Oxford. I'm clicking the wrong button. Um, I I will mention uh, you later on, Sarah. Thanks for joining us. How handy that you're you're here um, because you're one of the uh, engagement experiences that's been uploaded. We'll get to that. We'll get to that uh, in a second. I wanted to share just some sort of thoughts uh, of my own this time. Normally I'm asking other people their thoughts. I thought I'd just give you some of my own. Uh, and I thought I'd start off with the plenary session. So this morning we were looking at responsible research and engagement. This was a fantastic panel. If you were there, you know exactly what I mean. If you weren't, we had some really great insights as we always do in these sessions, but I think this this time in particular, lots of um, perspectives from different areas of academia and outside of academia. What does responsible research and engagement uh, mean? And some of the things that I thought were, that I really enjoyed, a lot to process said, now I, I, I'm just looking at my notes. Um, uh, so Raika was saying um, that some of the challenges that we feel we've achieved may not actually have been so deeply won. And I thought that was really fascinating. The idea of, we think we've solved certain problems, but actually COVID times of crisis reveals that maybe those changes uh, have not been uh, as as fully won as, as we thought. The, the Black Lives Matter and we realize, hang on, we, we thought we had made some progress, but actually that progress might have been um, an illusion. I think that's a really important thing to think. Have we solved problems? Have we truly solved problems? 
Or do we just think, yes, things have kind of settled down? So constantly thinking, how deeply won are the challenges or are we just moving on um, to, to uh, new topics? Um, she also mentioned the, the intersection between poverty and race and racism and how different groups are affected. And when it comes to responsible research, we're constantly thinking, where are these people? How are we connecting? How are the people at the heart of the research uh, of, of the ethical process? And uh, Radanka was also really keen on uh, increasing diversity in teams. And I thought she said a really nice thing. She said, you know, don't just recruit one person, one new and different voice into that team. Recruit two. So they can be a smaller group within a larger group. One person can easily, uh, you know, it's difficult for them to fight alone. So we're not just looking for a singular voice to add a single diverse voice. Uh, you can't have a diverse voice. You want a diversity of, of voices. So making sure that we're not just uh, recruiting that one new person, but an ally. So that our uh, teams have teams within them and they're able to champion different groups and different rights. Uh, Richard also, uh, Richard took us through a kind of extraordinary journey. He started off in the, the medieval uh, England, the idea of a, a peasant and how much agency that peasant uh, standing in a muddy field had over their lives and questioned, has that really changed? Do we have more freedom or are our stories uh, already written? And uh, again, Richard had a, a nice comment when he said that times of crisis are also times of great change. All the pieces are thrown up into the air. So when we have uh, situations like uh, COVID, you know, there is chaos and pieces, when they are thrown into the air, they land in slightly different ways. And so it provides us opportunity for change. But we do also need to think, who is going to be affecting that change? Who is in control? So when the pieces land and new directions are set, are we making sure that we're on a better course? Uh, and I thought it was a really interesting point from, from Richard. And I just wanted to highlight just um, one point from Emily Morrison as well, uh, who said that so there's been a, a survey done and they, they asked people in communities how much agency they felt they had and the ability to uh, foster change in their local community. Pre-pandemic, that was at 29%. 29% of people believed that they had the ability to influence um, their, their community and create change. Now, when we've gone back, so it's just, we're talking just a year, 47%. So that's quite interesting. You know, an increase of nearly 20% of people thinking they have the ability to create change. And again, it's these times of crisis that allow us the option to change our direction, uh, but making sure that we're off in the direction that we really want and that we're having different people feed into those discussions so that all our uh, achievements can be deeply won as well. So those are some of the things that I took away from uh, this morning's plenary, but there was so much to digest. Uh, I think everyone left thinking, I need some time to just settle these ideas and think through them. And the plenaries are be were recorded and they'll be uploaded later. Uh, so you can experience them um, at your leisure and go back and enjoy some of those points. Uh, now I do want to get on to uh, meet our, our first guest uh, today. And so we're gonna go to uh, Emma McKenna in just a second and just hear a little bit of what she's experienced um, of, of the day. Uh, so if I just bring up uh, Emma on screen just now. So Emma, hello, uh, welcome back Hi. to the little virtual Thank stage you. to the Engage Live. Um, now, if people missed uh, your contribution early in the week, can you just remind us um, who you are and, and where you work? I work in the science shop at Queen's University in Belfast. And what we would do mainly is work with communities who need research done and with students who need to do research as part of their degree and match the two together. And I also am kind of involved in European networks in that field as well. Brilliant, thanks for joining us again, um, Emma. Now, uh, remind us, this is not your first engage. How many engage engages have you been to? All of them, all of them. Um, I'm wondering actually, is there anyone else apart from Paul and Sophie who've been to, every year I say, no, I can't justify it this year. You know, I've been to so many and then the theme comes out and I think, oh, but that's so interesting. <laughs> so particularly delighted to have you um, reporting back on the sessions because uh, having been there from the start, uh, great insights, Emma. Uh, so now just, just tell me, which of the sessions uh, did you manage to get along to today? Well, because, and it's not just today, actually, yesterday as well, um, because so much of my work is around engagement through teaching and learning. So I have tended to highlight and prioritize those sessions. And particularly because at the start, there was nothing in Engage around that area. 
So it's kind of exciting that we, we have a building um, network. Um, so I was just at a session on building an engaged practitioners network. And then yesterday I was at a session run by King's College London around embedding public engagement into um, postgraduate training. Mm -hmm. And how just just broadly, how has the conference been going for you to feel? Because obviously, being online, completely different situation. Um, are you liking it? Are you finding it challenging? How are you experiencing the virtual conference? I there are really good things about it. You know, I'm I'm still wearing slippers. That's fantastic. Um, I've got my own coffee mug. You know, all those sorts of things. But. What I'm finding is, I suppose, because I've been around this stuff a long time, and sometimes the things you want to pick up with people on aren't the things you really want to ask them publicly in front of 40 people. And they aren't the things they want to answer publicly in front of 40 people. So that's the stuff that I feel I'm missing out on is the, OK, that's the really nice example. That's fantastic. But tell me, did that bit really work? Or what did you learn from the bits of it that didn't work? Because you don't always feel comfortable saying that in a live stream. Um, so I feel like I'm missing out on those side conversations a little bit. Um, but, you know, I, I'm still really grateful to be part of it. Yeah, it's also it's difficult to re replicate those kind of informal interactions. Like what I'm thinking is, I'll think of the conversations. There have been so many engages, you'll know exactly the kind of the ones I mean. After the session and you're filtering out of the room, and it's just as you're mm -hmm. filtering out of the room and you're kind of chatting this person next to you about the ideas you've just experienced, that's what we kind of lose because it's kind of like we're all here together and you can put something in the chat for everyone to see and then we're all gone as well, um, which is really challenging. But we're doing the best we can. I, th I think it, the conversations are still happening uh, and hopefully people can remember that there's the notice board as well if they want to carry on conversations and they've got questions to post them on the notice board. Um, so Emma, if you just... just Talk to just the first session you mentioned there. Can you just tell us just a, a little bit of what was discussed for people that weren't able to make it? Well, to be fair, I had to leave halfway through it to come here. Um, but it was um, around building an engaged practitioners network in this area of kind of community engaged learning, service learning. So it's quite a broad network, actually. And in fact, I think it has some genesis in Engage last year. Um, because I know I was talking with Marie Zapaki from um, UCL who is one of the, the main movers in that network um, at that time. So it's it's colleagues from De Montfort University, um, from King's College, from Nottingham Trent, and from UCL as well, who are trying to bring people together loosely who are interested in this kind of area of community engaged and community-based learning. Because um, you know one of the things I've always thought is if we want people to be engaged practitioners, we need to start them. When they're at university we need in fact we need to start them in school but i'm not taking mm. that bit on um so we need to start them earlier thinking about this so this is a place for people to exchange good practice and i would say there was certainly 40 or 50 people there and my notifications have been going crazy with with pop-ups from the because it was a teams meeting um so clearly people are really enjoying it and really getting a lot out of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and was this the kind of session, was there any kind of things that you thought, oh, this is something, an idea that I'm going to take away or something I want to go back? Or is it just about carrying on those conversations? Well, they were just getting to that point when I had to leave. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go back and look. They did say that they would put um, a link on the um, Engage. I'm going to say Padlet because I was in a meeting about a Padlet earlier. It's not Padlet. What is it? The, the notice board. It will, yeah, the notice board is a Padlet. So you're right on both counts. Ah, perfect. So they're going to put something on the notice board about it. So if people are interested, I would really encourage you to, to follow up with them. Um, I think they'll be running some more seminars. They ran a conference in May, I think. So there'll be more happening in this field. And then uh, there was the, you just wanted to touch on the, the other session that you went to that you thought was particularly good as well. Uh, just, can you just tell us just a little bit about that? So this was um, King's College London. It was Alice Taylor G and, and colleagues who were running it. And it was around embedding public engagement into postgraduate taught training. So they had students from a range of different disciplines, broadly around kind of engineering, medical disciplines, um, coming together to run public engagement events. So to run stalls, to do one student did um, a podcast. So to do different public engagement activities. Um, but students, it's a compulsory module, which I thought was really interesting because um, students are sometimes resistant of these things being compulsory modules. Um, and they had a couple of the students on talking about it as well. I was in a, a small group with one of the students who was mm -hmm. so enthusiastic about it. 
Um, and both students had gone on to do PhDs, which again speaks a little bit to the point of if these are going to be future researchers, this is exactly the kind of experience you want to be given them early on mm -hmm. when there aren't stakes and there isn't money or grants or reputations involved. You want to be giving them a taste of that stuff early. And, and then just looking forward, we've got one more day left of, of the Engage conference. Have you planned out your schedule for the next day? Uh, I have, and I can't remember what it is. Um, there's the open mic night tonight, obviously. Um, and I'm looking forward to, I think we, we're all kind of going to speak briefly at the plenary tomorrow as well. Um, so that that's probably my morning is, is figuring out what I'm, what I'm saying at the plenary, if I'm entirely honest. Brilliant, Emma. Thank you so much. And you'll be back as well. Uh, not done on live streams just yet either. You'll be back again tomorrow as we bring all our contributors back uh, for our live stream uh, tomorrow. Emma, thank you very much for joining us and talking us through the sessions that you've been exploring. Thanks, Emma. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, so that was Emma McKenna and next we're going to have uh, Akram Khan in just a few minutes and he'll talk you through some of the sessions that he's been experiencing today, uh, catching up for those who may have missed out. Uh, before we do, um, I do want to dive into some tweets as well. I've been watching tweets. Uh, interesting, Emma said that she thinks there's been fewer tweets this year um, and I think it might be true, it might be true, it might not be, I'm not too sure um, but what I'm thinking is maybe fewer tweets because we're all in sessions talking to each other anyway whereas normally you're sitting quietly uh, in your uh, room and you are wanting to join the conversation whereas because we've got the zoom chats and the teams chats the conversations are happening elsewhere so don't forget to tweet hashtag engage 2020 um, and I will be uh, browsing through them a few nice ones oh wrong one cover that one uh, this was a nice one from Ben Leatherfield uh, who felt that you might be missing out on uh, kind of snowy, cold at uh, Bristol. So he shared a little Christmas picture from last year uh, so that you can uh, reminisce about when we were all together uh, in Bristol last time. Uh, I also am enjoying the living library, so kind of facilitating conversations. Uh, it's worth checking out uh, the Padlet for this. I will put a link into the chat box um, where you can have a little look and see what conversations were happening. Uh, today. So just put this into the chat box, uh, the living library. The idea that you can go and connect with a person uh, for a specific conversation. It's an idea that's been going around for a few years. I think it's a really nice idea. The idea of kind of, I'm a person who has a story to tell, come and chat to me, a living library. Um, also, if you've tuned into any of the other live streams, you'll know I'm a big fan of, of, of Nuts Picchu. Um, and we've got a little kind of detective-y one, little bowler hat happening today. I am living for uh, Public Engagement Pikachu and uh, next year, next year, just throwing it out there, Public Engagement Pets, Public Engagement Pets, next year, save it up for next year, that's going to be the hashtag for next year. Um, another little project I want to highlight, uh, something I, I think is absolutely wonderful, uh, Sarah Cosgrave along with um, Hannah and Kirsty ran a SciComm crafting session. If you've not come across SciComm crafting before, it's a beautiful project. The idea is on a Zoom call you get together, you each do your own crafting project uh, and you can just share and connect with people. Uh, and it's been a really nice way, I think, for the science communication community to connect uh, over lockdown. So SciComm Crafting, check it out. They ran a session at Engage the other day, um, but Sarah also organizes regular SciComm Crafting sessions where you can come together and do your own little craft project and have a little chat with some other science communicators. I also uh, want to mention the short films. That's where we're seeing Sarah's joining us in the, in the chat there. Um, it's worth checking out the festival playlist, uh, which gives you examples of practice that have been gathered from kind of across the sector. Again, I'm going to put link, link box in the uh, link in the chat box there. And that's just a little playlist of just little short videos uh, talking you through some of the practice that people have been getting up to in the, the past little while. Some great examples in there, so do check that out. Um, Mugs of uh, Engage. I cannot uh, get enough of this. Uh, so we've got a good old Star Wars mug. And being massive geek, I'm, I'm wearing a Star Trek t-shirt. Star Wars, I, I love it too. Uh, so I'm a big fan of Engage mugs, big fan of geeky Engage mugs. And uh, speaking of geeky Engage mugs, also Dan, who I believe did kickstart the Mugs of Engage uh, hashtag. Beautiful, beautiful little labyrinth mug there, um, which I'm really enjoying. So that's a little review of the tweets. Keep the tweets coming in. I do want to see them. Keep chat comments going as well. Uh, I am checking them as we go through today. Uh, but we're going to now get on to our second uh, contributor of the day. So we did already meet Akram earlier on the week. Um, but we're going to be introducing Akram back uh, to our virtual stage to hear a little bit about what he has been experiencing um, today. So let's say hello to Akram. Hello. Hello. 
Yeah. There we go. We found you. We found you. Hi, Akam. How are you? Hi. Nice to see you. Can you hear me? Uh, and so, so again, just uh, in case uh, people didn't catch your your uh, contribution on uh, Monday, uh, can you just remind the the viewers just now uh, who Akram Khan is? Yes, it's always a tough question, honestly. <laughs> so Akram is uh, uh, a particle physicist uh, at Brunel University, and he's also uh, the academic lead uh, for for public engagement. Brilliant. Thanks, Akram. And you might also recognize Akram from the uh, interviews that were done. So it was compilations made. So Akram did uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I interviewed him and we, we made this little compilation video. And actually, when Paul got your video, um, uh, no one knows I was going to say this in live stream, but when Paul got your video, he just thought it was absolutely fantastic. He thought like it was just really conversational and chatty. And and I was saying, Paul, this is exactly, this was it was such a joyful project for me to run because I got to spend just a week just connecting with all these public engagement professionals and hearing extraordinary stories of high points and low points throughout the year. And uh, it, it was just such a nice thing. So, so if you're watching and you've not seen uh, Akram's contribution to the interviews, make sure you're checking that out. And again, it's on the YouTube page. You can find out all the answers to all the questions that the, the PEP people uh, contributed. So Akram, um, yeah. Sessions, are you just out of a session as, as well just now? What, what have you experienced today so far? It, it was incredible, honestly. I've just, uh, in a different zone, I think, uh, coming out of the last session. I mean, the, I went to the plenary session in the morning, which was astounding and amazing. Lots of interesting ideas, lots of provocations. And I think lots of uh, utopian thinkings. And the question is, oh, actually not utopian thinking, utopian imaginations. You know, people can think how what they would want ideally and the question is how do you how do you rationalize how do you optimize you know the best places to to be and 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 how you can innovate and i think there was lots of ideas uh which i think i i really need to think about you know how does one do this because because uh we all need to do this how do you optimize this and so that was brilliant i think i think that, that was amazing and i think the the one that i've just come from it was 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 a completely different tone. It was a very, very beautifully run uh, workshop. Yeah, by one, I'm particularly keen to hear about this one because actually we, we had uh, Carl, who's been watching um, each day, I specifically asked, and a lot of other people have asked me, can we have a little bit of an insight into this session? So can you just tell us just the title of the session, first of all? Yeah, it, 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 it's the the wind phones of Atashu and Belfast. And, and, and I think it was a very, very sensitive and a very, very powerful mm -hmm. workshop dealing with actually very deep resonating uh, issues on how does one cope with, with, with grief, with loss? You know, how do you cope with a sense of, of guilt? You know, uh, uh, how do you search for strength in, in these times, these, these very traumatic and troubling times, you know? Uh, you know and, and I think I think what Patrick was also trying to do he was trying to say, well, actually, one has to endure uh, and, and seemingly bear with patience and dignity through this time and, 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 and reach out to something beyond and something maybe uh, uh, with somebody at, at some moments. And I think that there, there were ways of trying to come to terms with this because I mean, the other powerful thing that, that, that he mentioned was that, you know, when, when, when we have grief, when our heart is filled with grief, we are burdened to a large extent and it stops the senses. It stops us from feeling. And sometimes we have to release that in whatever way that, that we can, such that we can feel again, such that we can touch again, such that we can live again, such that we can communicate and, and 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 appreciate life and, and i think it was very very powerfully done i mean you know there were uh, amazing moments of, of of reflection and audience participation i mean people were amazingly drawn into it uh you know about how does one sell how does one come to terms with this and so so you know you come out thinking wow truly thoughtful and and, and reflective and how do you engage people or the community or universities in actually trying to pilot such projects, you know, or, or make people think about these issues. 
Yeah, so the, the session itself was was focusing on um, survivors of the 2011 tsunami. Is, is that correct? That's right. I, I mean, it, I mean, the, the, the idea was, was that, you know, that was something that was done in, in Japan. You know, there was this telephone, uh, you know, a, a Bakelite uh, black telephone disconnected. It wasn't connected and it was put into this sort of uh, a, a, a telephone booth and there's a, a pad that's next to it. And people who who lost people or who missed people would go and they would phone and they would talk to the wind and they would express their their connection to uh, to what? I mean, that's the question to ask. Who are you talking to if not mm. that you're talking to a vacuum, to the wind? And, you know, you have this dialogue, an internal dialogue with yourself. And people have been going, I, mean, I think I, we were saying that over 25,000 people have gone since that period. And then they would jot something down of what they felt. And they would, you know, go regularly and communicate with loved ones that, that they want to see how they would feel, tell them how they've been. And maybe that's one way of, of sort of engaging with, with or dealing with loved ones. And, you know, it reminds me, uh, Jamie, of something very powerful that just occurs to me. I mean, Beckett wrote this wonderful, uh, you know, he's a wonderful dramatist, but he wrote uh, Waiting for Godot. And in there, it just comes across my mind. He wrote, you know, she gave birth across a grave. We see life, but for a fleeting second, and we're back into it again. And I think that beautifully captures that, you know, life that we have is not long, it's very short. And we're back into darkness. We die longer than we live. And while we live, we've got to rejoice. And it's very optimistic because while we live, we've got to enjoy and rejoice. We're given the opportunity of light and interaction and engagement. And so in a way, it, 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 for us to appreciate that, that loss is part of living, you actually live deeper to a large extent. Mm -hmm. And so in this session was was taking that those those ideas and that concept and that, that, that talking to the wind and and tying that into how universities can be a kind of civic space um for for communities. I know right? you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, it, 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 it's almost asking. It was almost asking, but not giving any answers. It was just. I mean, they were asking questions about how can we how can we develop a space within within our community, you know, because the university is an anchored institution within the community. You know, how can we do this? How can we develop some form of narrative, a discussion, you know, different voices can come together and how can we create a quilt, you know, sort of knit something from these stories into something that the whole community can wear and embrace and take comfort with. You know, make that your your sort of blanket of comfort. Beautiful. Uh, Faye's asking in the chat box as, as well there on Periscope if the session will be um, reshared. I, I don't believe it will, Faye, but um, do look up uh, Patrick Todd. Is it Patrick Todd? Uh, it is Patrick, yeah. Yep, yeah. Yeah, uh, from um, uh, Belfast, I believe. Um, but I, I, I apologize, the session won't be reshared. It's something uh, I'm glad that Akram, you were able to go and share some of the, the reflections from it. Um, and thank you very much for joining me uh, today. Right. We will be again seeing you tomorrow on the, the live stream as well as we bring all the reporters back together for a little bit of a, a celebration and a debrief as well. Uh, but Akram, thank you very much for joining me again today. Bye bye. Pleasure. Thank you. Bye bye. Um, so we're uh, right at the end of our live stream again today but if you're sitting there thinking I've not had enough engaged live stream then don't worry because you're in for a treat uh, one we're back again tomorrow where we'll have all of our guests testing my internet to the limit we'll be back with all of our reporters uh, as well one of the co-directors of the NCCP will be joining us again tomorrow for a final summing up of engage 2020 and we are back live on youtube again tonight at 4 15 so there's enough time to get away have a little break and get back in front of youtube settle down because honestly i've seen some of the contributions they're phenomenal like you they're going to be you can imagine you can imagine what the session is going to be like and your imaginings are completely wrong. Like when we say open mic is open mic, open space, 
there are some interesting ideas coming your way at 4.15. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who joined me uh, today. I'm delighted uh, to see you all. We will be back again tomorrow at 4 o'clock. So the times are changing slightly so we can fit everything in at uh, 4 o'clock tomorrow for the live stream. I will put a link in the chat box to the live stream and also thank uh, the... Uh, Twitter contributors from today uh, so you can follow up with them so the live live stream link for quarter past four is in the chat box also a link to those tweets that I showed you so please do uh, connect uh, another another fan of uh, hi Zara um, fan of the 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 to Toland sorry I was saying Todd Toland I apologize for getting Patrick's name wrong um, I think we're gonna need some write-ups on that so hopefully we'll pull some uh, ideas together and we can share a little bit more of, of Patrick's work because it does sound like it was a phenomenal session uh, but for now that is uh, us finished for this live stream we'll see you again at quarter past four thank you very much for joining me and join me again at four o'clock tomorrow for our last live stream of Engage see you then bye bye